If you want to beat diabetes, walking works. Hello everyone, we're up on Devil's Dyke today. Absolutely beautiful spot and of course at this time of the year it's not too busy. At least not yet anyway. I've decided I'm going to be using resistance bands. Funnily enough, I had these up in the loft. So we dug them out the other day and uh, I'm enjoying using them so far. Anyway, let's catch you up on what's been going on. This is my current blood sugar level. Thanks to everybody who told me I had it on the American setting. So I've now switched it to the UK. As you can see, there is a green zone where everything's okay. And then amber above and then red below for when things are going awry. Whenever I can, I have a salad before my main meal. Salad with a bit of vinegar can help control spikes. Now the food crime on this plate is not just the jacket potato, that's an experiment, but it's the lumpy gravy and I made it. The jacket potato was pre-cooked and uh, reheated, but it's been in the fridge for several days. Being in the fridge reduces the impact. So we're out for our walk. Uh, sorry if there's wind noise, but there's nothing I can do about it at the moment. Um, so this is our first walk after uh, half a jacket potato. So I'm interested to see if I avoid a spike. I'm feeding it our little duck friends bird seed because I wouldn't want them to get diabetes. The only trouble is uh, the bird seed gets in the cracks and the poor ducks can't get it. I don't know where you are, but we've been getting some very heavy rain recently and everywhere is flooding. It's so flooded now, isn't it? Very different to when we came before. This is a shop from the same spot um, 12 days ago and it was very dry and low at that point. But just look at it now. This is good. We want those reservoirs filled back up, but not good if you're one of the many unfortunate people who've suffered flooding. We're um, sort of two thirds away around our walk now, aren't we? Yeah. So I just checked my levels to see what they are and I'm currently at 112. I'll put uh, a screenshot I took. It just goes to show the impact of having a brisk walk after a carb meal. Well, we're back from our walk and I've just checked the monitor and I'm currently just coming up from 90. It went down to 90 on that uh, walk. Amazing. Big thank you to whoever it was that recommended the Yucca app to me. We've uh, downloaded that and it's fascinating. If anybody doesn't know, it's an app that you use to scan products in the shop to see whether they're good or bad for you. It's free to use, um, but if you pay, I've paid £10 to get access to all of the features in the app. What's for lunch then? We have a pre-cooked chilli. That's been in the fridge for a long time, hasn't it? been in the freezer at home yeah. for um, about a month. Yeah. A bit. <laughs> That's retrograded. And then we've got some pre-cooked rice from home that's been in the freezer again. So um, that's defrosted, so that's retrograded. Yeah. And then we've got some um, frozen runner beans, sliced runner beans, and these are still frozen. Yeah, um, because we forgot to bring our salad, didn't we? And we've forgotten to bring the salad yeah. for pre-eating, so that's all we've got. Okay, so we'll get that scoffed and then we'll see what impact it has on when we did our, our walk. You don't need to add any water to these frozen beans. They'll just cook in their own juices. My lunch has arrived. Carol's cooked me up chilli and rice and beans. So this is another experiment. First time I think I've ate rice. This looks tasty. Right, as you can see, the sugar's on the rise. So it's time for a walk.
back from our walk, 2.8 miles up and down hill. That was a good walk, that was. Very blowy. Whew, a bit hot and sweaty now. Fascinating results on that walk because you can see from this chart that my blood sugar started to rise after that meal. And then it peaked. And I could see whilst I was on the walk that it started to go down. And then it went up even higher before coming down again. And this graphic I'm showing you was the screen capture just as we got back to the van. I don't think I've noticed that before. And I don't know why it would come down and then go back up. So if anybody's got any ideas on that, please let me know. Now that's an interesting bit of kit on the back of that. I'm assuming that's CCTV camera, but I don't know. One of the blockages to doing this new diet is you don't always have the right foods in the cupboard or the freezer. So I've got an answer to that. Batch cooking a soup today. Really cheap to make and easy. 99p for a bag of mixed frozen vegetables. I cooked the whole bag. I'm going to add some lentils to this. Red lentils. They're really good for you. There we go. Got the lentils in there. And now I'm just going to add some water and bring it up to the top. I'm also going to cook a ham in it for added flavour. Right, that's the meat in. Uh, I've just added a little bit, two teaspoons of chicken stock to it. That's why the water is cloudy. Right, got the ham out of the soup. So that's all cooked and this is what it's looking like. So I'm going to blitz that up now with a hand blender. <laughs> right, I'm going to give it a taste and adjust the seasoning and the jobs are good. And, and there we have it. Five portions of a vegetable and lentil soup. And each one of those containers is enough for both Carol and I for one meal. And I'm rapidly cooling down my ham and we can have that with all sorts of meals going forwards. One of the other changes we've made is eating our main meal at lunchtime rather than at night. And then we find that we sleep better. Well, if you're a bread lover, what can you eat if you're on a diabetic diet? Well, to be honest, I don't really know the answer to that yet. But uh, I was looking for a bread and I found this one called High Low. I was scanning them all with the Yucca app. And this one came out as excellent. So I thought I'd give it a try. And we decided to have it with sardines on toast, which is one of my old favourites. This is the result after I ate them. And the next screen shows what it was when I went to bed. So my blood sugar levels were higher than usual overnight. And I put that down to my last meal, which was sardines on toast. Uh, now, if you look at the picture, you will think that's three huge slices of bread. But those, those bits of bread are actually quite small. But anyway, it certainly kept my blood sugar levels higher than I've been reading so far. So I'm gonna strike them off the list. Right, I'm cooking liver and onions today. Some people don't like that, but I absolutely love it, and so does Carol. So I'm gonna start with a few red onions in a pan. I think Sainsbury's short changed me on this liver. It's lots of little bits, not nice big bits. Bring back the old butchers. My mum used to cook liver and she would um, dust it in flour and salt and pepper. And I've tried both methods and to be honest with you, I can't really tell the difference. But I suppose when she was doing it, that flour would have thickened the sauce. I'm going to be using gravy granules. Uh, not, not much, just enough to give it a gravy. Anyway, let's see what happens. It's coming together. Now I've got some uh, veg. I'm going to put in with this just to heat it up because it's the second half of the veg I cooked yesterday. So that can all go in. And I've just added a couple of slices of that gammon I cooked the day before. 
and that's in place of the bacon. There we are, I've added a bit of gravy, so that's going to be the sauce. And that's the finished dish. So we're out for a walk after lunch, and it's amazing how quickly your blood sugar level drops if you include a walk after lunch. I'll show you the screenshot now. Right, just got back from our walk and uh, it looks like the reading has bottomed out now. So what do you think of all this dieting, Carol? It's not been that hard really so far. I enjoy having that bowl of salad as a starter before lunch. Mm -hmm. And I much prefer having our main meal at lunchtime. Yeah. And then something a bit lighter in the evening. What about what you don't like? Um, you've really got to think ahead and plan what you're going to have. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you want to do the retrogradation and have your potatoes and pasta pre-cooked the day yeah. before. But as long as you take the time and plan out like the next couple of days ahead it's not too bad pretty good then mm. and all the meals have been really tasty so far you know not really cutting out much that we used to eat before well we haven't had any processed food highly processed food yeah since we started have we yeah and, and no uh, takeaways no takeaways which i haven't really missed no nor have i um yeah, maybe give it time and we'll have a craving for some chips or something. Well, we'll see. And a takeaway. And it doesn't mean we can't have some chips. It just no. means that Not um, I will have to have just a, you know, a tiny amount. Yeah. As somebody said in the comments, make the carb the side yeah not the main thing. not the main thing yeah, like in a been, pasta meal yeah it's been quite easy to cut down on the carbs so no fish and chips but still have them yeah um i have missed um sweet things like desserts well cakes, you've got the sweeter teeth than me haven't you? i've got much sweeter tooth than you and i have had um the odd biscuit like yeah, but you're not on the diet, are you? No, you're only on the diet because you're eating, the same, you. same me, yeah. you're eating the same as me, sort of thing. And um, yeah, and then I, so instead of having a pudding or a cake or something, then I'll have a banana and you'll have an apple. Yeah, I do like an apple every night. Yeah, that is really tasty. But I'm eating it mainly for the fibre. Mm. So one thing I know for certain now. Walking after a meal really helps to control the glucose levels. We hope you enjoyed the video and if you find it useful, please like and subscribe and also share it with anybody who you may feel might benefit from this information. Thanks for watching.